Hey, good morning. Welcome to Dr. Will's History Road Trip. Doing a special live stream today. I'm actually um, in a little place called Delta, Louisiana. Delta is right across the Mississippi River from Vicksburg. And I'm going to be over the next couple of days shooting a video about the Battle of Vicksburg. Tomorrow I'll be joined by my good friend and uh, Civil War scholar, Dr. Andy Lang at Mississippi State. But I thought today what I'd like to do is come and, and show you a couple of uh, locations in the Vicksburg campaign that most people don't come to visit. They're a little bit out of the way. Um, when most people come to Vicksburg, they go to the National Military Park, which makes sense. Um, <laughs> what I want to do right now, I, I'm at, like I mentioned, across the river from Vicksburg at a place called Grant's Canal. And let me just give you a little bit of information here on, um, on Grant's Canal. First, we got to talk about the Vicksburg campaign a little bit. Vicksburg, let me show you this, uh, his, this interpretive sign over here because that'll give you a little bit of an idea about Vicksburg's location. So Vicksburg, Mississippi sat right here. You can see on the map, this is the location of Vicksburg in the 1860s. Now today the river has shifted and while the city's in the same place, the river kind of it, it is left out this bend, but um, and it's, it's a little bit shorter. Vicksburg sits up high on a bluff, and we're gonna you'll see some footage of that later. But it was the thing that held the two halves of the South together. By the summer of 1862, the Union Navy, meaning uh, ironclad gunboats coming from the north had knocked out all the Confederate defenses all the way to Vicksburg. They had taken Memphis in the spring of 1862. Um, the Union Blue Water Fleet, the Gulf Squadron coming up from the Gulf, had taken New Orleans in April of 1862. They had taken Baton Rouge. And the only thing left in their way in terms of controlling the entire Mississippi River by the summer of 1862 were two spots, Vicksburg, Mississippi, and Port Hudson, Louisiana, farther south and Vicksburg really is the more important of the two spots. So during the Civil War, starting in the summer of 1862, uh, they tried several ways to get at Vicksburg. The problem with taking out Vicksburg is it sits on some very high bluffs like I mentioned, and that's plung you can put artillery up there plunging fire on any ship down below. Uh, the U.S. Navy had tried to knock out Vicksburg in 1862. They were unsuccessful. Um, the Confederate ironclad called the CSS Arkansas was instrumental in that. So that summer, while they were having a hard time getting at Vicksburg, a Union Brigadier General named Thomas Williams came up with an idea. He said, why don't we just bypass the guns on the bluff and dig a canal across the base of this peninsula? Then the upper fleet coming from the north can just bypass the guns on the bluff you can get below it and then you can you can run troops through uh land troops on the south side that kind of thing so what we're looking at right now is what remains of that canal now the problem with digging this canal in the summer of 1862 is that if you've ever spent any time here in the lowlands in mississippi louisiana anywhere in the low swampy parts of the south um it's infested with skeeters and all sorts of other nasty little stinging insects. A lot of these soldiers, uh, men from mostly Connecticut, Massachusetts, there were a lot of New England regiments here that were digging this canal. Uh, they didn't do very well at all. They tended to get malaria and die. So what the Union Army did is they impressed local slaves. They took slaves off local plantations and had them dig part of this canal. That didn't work either. Okay. Um, the canal kind of left was left unfinished then in 1862 and then the effort to take over vicksburg in the fall of 1862 winter of 1863 was taken over by general ulysses s grant and grant tried i think he had seven failed attempts to get at vicksburg before he finally got to it um he tried marching his army down from north mississippi uh, he was stopped in the, in the swamps in the Delta by Confederate forces who had built forts. 
He even tried blowing up levees north of the city and trying to float ironclads across cotton fields. That didn't work. At one point, Grant decided, well, let's go back to this old idea of the canal. Um, he didn't really think it would work, but he figured it was something that would keep his men busy while he figured out another way to get at Vicksburg. They had also tried in December, the previous December of 1862, to attack Vicksburg from the north across the Yazoo River at a place called Chickasaw Bluffs. That didn't work. So they started again to redig this canal in the um, in the spring of 1863, around probably, I guess, March of 1863. Again, Union soldiers, probably about 1,200 slaves. Um, they used a couple of dredge boats. The problem, what they did was they dug this canal, they put a dam at the end of the Mississippi River where the water's flowing south. Otherwise, the water just flows into it and wipes everything out. They, they actually used some dredge, boat, dredge boats. They had some dredges in here but the dredges were big enough they could be seen from the bluffs of Vicksburg and Confederate gunners dro drove them off. They never finished this canal. And um, in March, the dam at the upper end of the canal broke and this entire peninsula was flooded out. And so they just abandoned work on it. <laughs> what Grant eventually was able to do, and you'll, you'll, we'll talk about this more tomorrow uh, with my friend Andy Lang, was he's able in May of 1863, or actually in April, to get, he just decided to take a chance and run his gunboats past the bluffs. They tied army transports to the west side of the gunboats, waited till there was a really dark night, tried to damp their fires so the smoke wouldn't be seen, and they tried to run past guns on the bluff, and most of the ships got through. And then once Grant had ships on the south side of the river, then he could just march his army down the Louisiana bank and then have the, the boats ferry them below south of Vicksburg, and then the Vicksburg campaign got in er, off in earnest after that point. We're going to talk about that more in a little bit. But today, just what, with what little time I got left, I don't want to keep this too long. Let me just show you some things. But this is the only part of the canal left that you can actually see. Of course, at one point, it went across the entire peninsula. It was probably about a mile and a half long, maybe a little longer. But this is the only part of it left. It's a, pretty much just a ditch but it's a historically significant ditch. So if you ever decide to see it and your significant other complains that you've taken her miles out of your way to go see a ditch, you can explain that it's a historically significant ditch. Um, they have in recent years added a few more monuments here. Um, you've got some interpretive markers here, like this one that talks about operation against Vicksburg. It mentions uh, the original attempt to dig this canal under Brigadier General Thomas Williams. And, and you see all the Union regiments that were involved in this. And then what they've done here within probably the last 10, 15, 20 years is they decided to put up some interpretive markers and some monuments to uh, some black Union troops that fought nearby. One of the first, I think the first battle that black troops were involved in in large numbers in the Civil War was at a place called Milliken's Bend. And Milliken's Bend was on the Louisiana side of the river, a little bit north of Vicksburg. It was a supply depot guarded by black troops. And in the summer of 1863, to relieve the pressure on Vicksburg, Confederate troops attacked it. And so they've put, Milliken's Bend isn't even up there anymore. I think the, the river has changed and, and washed away what used to be there. But here at Grant's Canal, this is where they've decided to um, memorialize these soldiers. So you've got an interpretive marker here about the Battle of Milliken's Bend which really proved to the, the U.S. Army that black troops not only would fight, but that they could fight well. And then here, and this, this is very new, I think only within, I think this is within the last 10 years. This monument here was built by the state of Connecticut as a monument to the 9th Connecticut Volunteers, um, who was one of the regiments that was digging this canal originally under Brigadier General Williams. So you can see this 9th Regiment, Connecticut Volunteers, it's a newer monument. It's pretty nice. So it's this black, sort of black, I don't know if that's obsidian or what it is, but it's an attractive monument. And here you can read about the 9th Connecticut Volunteers. After, after they dug this canal here, 
they uh, were withdrawn to Baton Rouge and they took part in the Battle of Baton Rouge in August of 1862. They were attacked by Confederate troops under um, former U.S. Vice President John C. Breckinridge. And then they basically were just uh, on guard duty in New Orleans for the rest of the war. But we'll go back over here. This interpretive marker also talks about some of the black troops that were involved at, um, at Milliken's Bend. Let's turn this around. There you can see the uh, African brigades, what they called them. 8th Louisiana colored, 9th Louisiana, 11th, 13th, 1st Mississippi colored. There you go. Um, and there's the casualties and all that stuff. All right. Well, again, just a, just a little something interesting. This is uh, an area I think is interesting, but most people would never take the time to come out here, and I thought you might like to see it. What I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to go down to uh, Grand Gulf, Mississippi, south of Vicksburg, and which is where, when Grant did get his troops south of the river, that's where the transports crossed the board, boats over, and then there were some, some battles fought around there in Port Gibson. I'm gonna drive over there and go live from there in a little bit, so join me again in a little bit. Thanks for uh, watching this episode of Dr. I don't know if it's an episode. Thanks for watching this little live stream of Dr. Will's History Road Trip. Catch you on the road. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Dr. Will's History Road Trip. If you like what I'm doing and want to continue following, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification button so you'll get updates when I post new content. Also, please consider supporting me via PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App. Your support will enable me to go to interesting places and film them and talk about them with you. Feel free to suggest locations that you might like to see me visit in the comments below. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the road.